Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to work with the Adventure API. Okie dokie guys, welcome back. I gave you some choices and the people have spoken for what video you want me to record next. And this was what was chosen, the Adventure API or Adventure Library. I didn't know what it was. Um, you know, the word Adventure had me thinking it would be something else, but the Adventure Library or Adventure API is essentially a way for you to do many things, but it's a simplified way of sending messages to users, boss bars, sound, titles, books, um, modifying the player list, the tab list. And uh, as they describe it themselves on their own website, you can say Adventure is a library for server controllable user interface elements in Microsoft, uh, or, excuse me, Minecraft Java Edition. Now, I don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean. That's not a very um, understandable sentence for people who don't have knowledge about this. Uh, so yeah, I just like to think of it as a, a better way, an easier way of sending chat messages uh, boss bar sound and etc. So I'm going to be teaching you um, how to do in this episode send chat messages or what's called text components or components. Now this will be a you know a couple part mini series in this bigot series. So I'll be showing you a bunch of di different elements of the adventure library. But uh, for this episode specifically, I'll be showing you chat components or text components so that you can send messages uh, in a better way than you would normally do inside of Bucket or Spigot. Okie dokie, so I'll be linking this website in the description below. This is where you can find all of the documentation for this. And uh, it's pretty good, actually. It gives you what you need to know. Um, but just some foreground information before we get started here. So Adventure is something that uh, can be used with many different things in Minecraft. So I think it can actually be used in mods as well. But we do Spigot development here, plugin development specifically. So with Spigot and Bucket, it's not native to that, so it doesn't automatically include the Adventure library. But for Paper Spigot, it actually does include Adventure, so you can directly use it without having to do any extra importing of dependencies. So you can use that if you want to, but I'm just going to use it with Bucket or Spigot because that's what we like to do in the series. Uh, it's really up to you, and there's not too much of a difference. There's a, there's a bit of a difference because it's built in directly. Um, but generally speaking, the concept or concepts are pretty much the exact same, okay? Now, if you want to figure out how to use Adventure with specific things, like for example, Bucket, go down to Platforms and go to here. So these are all the different platforms that you can essentially integrate with Adventure. And of course, we want to do Bucket. Spigot is with Bucket, so we're doing sp uh, Bucket and Spigot development. So it says the Adventure platform implementation for Bucket targets Paper, Spigot, and Bucket for Minecraft 1.7.10 through 1.18.2, which is currently the latest version at the time of recording. So to be able to use Adventure in your plugin, all you have to do is add this to your palm.xml and it'll import it for you. And then you can add this and then you can use it. So let's get started with that. Let's go ahead and add this to our plugin so we can start using Adventure. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's open up our palm.xml because we're using Maven. So this is where you can specify all your imports for your dependencies. So first things first, let's go back here, copy the repository, and then paste it right here and then click the Maven reload button. And then while that's doing that, we'll go back here and copy the dependency and then put it back, paste it there, and then reload Maven. And now we should have the Adventure uh, library uh, specifically built for Bucket now imported into our project. So if you're doing something like making mods, you can use you know the specific one for Fabric. That's something you can do. Um, or Bungie Cord, Sponge API, whatever. Okay, so check those out if that's what you like to do. Now let's go back to Adventure Tutorial and let's make it so that we can have uh, Adventure accessible through our main plugin class here. So we're just going to copy this piece of code here that it's uh, giving for us, giving to us, paste it there, import that, and that's importable just because we set up the library to be imported by Maven. Beep beep, this is future Cody calling. Um, there's something I forgot to do. So before you start doing stuff with Adventure, you need to make sure that you actually set the field here. That's why it's grayed out. Um, so you need to go into your on enable and inside of your on enable when your plugin starts up You're going to initialize the adventure field here. So this dot adventure is equal to bucket Audiences dot creates and now it's asking for a plugin So we can just do this because we're inside of our plugin main class and there you go Don't forget that and you won't have any problems. And there we go So this is essentially what we're going to use to interface with the library to do stuff with the library 
and it's going to be amazing. Now, uh, to get access to this uh, method here, this public method inside of other classes, you just have to get an in instance of this plugin into a other class. Um, so let's go ahead and set that up. Let's just make a command so we can test out this, what I'm about to show you here. Now to get access to this method here, like I said, we have to get the instance of this plugin in here. So one way to do that is just to pass it through the constructor. So we're going to do private final adventure tutorial tutorial. That's just what we'll call the field. There we go. And then now when we uh, register this plugin or this command rather, we can just pass that in. So we'll call it potato set new executor, new potato command, and then pass in this. And now inside of here, we can do uh, tutorial dot adventure. Okay, let's start with the basics. Um, so the basis of adventure is that you have something called an audience, an audience, and I'm going to steal this from their documentation. An audience is a grouping of zero or more viewers of some content. So it's exactly how it sounds. An audience in a, you know, like a play or something like that, or audience for a movie, are the people people who are viewing the content that you're delivering to them. In that case, the content will be the video, the movie. In this case, the content that we can deliver to people using Adventure, like I said before, can be, you know, text, like chat text, a boss bar, sound, titles, books, all those kinds of things. So whenever you're trying to send something to someone or something, uh, you can get them as an audience and then you can send it through that. Okay. Now we need the content itself. And the content that we're uh, doing this episode is going to be chat components. Now you may have heard the term chat components when it comes to spigot development or bucket development before. They are essentially a way of building uh, chat messages within spigot or bucket, but Adventure has its own idea of a component. It's another different, it's a different way of making messages, okay? So don't get that confused with the traditional components that you're usually maybe, you know, used to working with. I don't like the bucket one or the spigot one. I don't know which, who implements that specifically. I'm gonna just say bucket. Um, it's kind of unwieldy to use. It's kind of annoying to use, especially when you wanna do stuff like set up, you know, hover events and click events and stuff like that. It's really annoying to have to use and I don't remember how to use it, but with Adventure, it's much easier. It kind of ma it makes perfect sense how you, you know, create chat components and you're going to see that in a second and it's extremely easy to build hover events and click events and all kinds of cool events directly into your messages so that your messages are fancy. So enough talking, let me show you how you can create a text component. Now to create a text component, you're going to need to store a text component. So we'll just have a variable for it. So import text component from, uh, make sure it's from net.kiori.adventure.text. So text component component is equal to and now we're going to do component dot, and you have all these options here. It's a little overwhelming, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. So we're just going to make a new text component, and we're going to do component dot text. And so you can provide all these different, you know, different pieces of information to the text method. But obviously the most basic one you would ever want to provide is a string. You know, a text component is usually going to have text, not like a Boolean or something like that. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to say, I like potatoes. And if you want, you can specify other information like a text color or a style. So let's, tr let's try doing that. Let's try coloring the, uh, the text that we want to send to someone. So we'll do text color dot, and you can do color, and you can provide an RGB value um, in many different ways or, you know, another format like HSV or something like that. So let's go ahead and look up a color picker online on the interweb. So color picker. So let's just go here, color picker online. Zoom in, let's just go ahead and choose a color that we like. So we're going to do, I like this color, like navy, sort of sort of navy blue. So I'm just going to copy these numbers here. That's an RGB thing. So R, red, green, blue. So copy those numbers and then we'll go back here. And so text color, import text color, dot color. And so we'll choose this one, paste the numbers, and there we go. So with luck, we should create a new text component or chat component that says, I like potatoes with a color of navy blue or whatever that would be. Now we have to send that to someone. Like I said, the audience is the person that is viewing this content, so we need to get an audience. And now we do that from whatever we created here, which is bucket audiences. Bucket audience is essentially a you know utility sort of thing that allows you to get um, audiences through the adventure library, okay? 
So we're going to do tutorial, which is our plugin. And then we're going to do adventure dot, and you have all these options here, but they all pretty much return an audience for the general, just generally speaking. So you can get a sender, just pass in like a regular command sender, like from here. Um, you can do a player, so pass in a player, that's self-explanatory. You can do players, and if you want to see what it does, just do control Q. It says gets an audience for all online players. The audience is dynamically updated as players join and leave, which is freaking awesome. Uh, and then you can do the server, so pass in a server name and a player by its UUID, that makes sense. You can do the console as well, all. So it gets an audience for all online players, including the service console. So just a bunch of really cool options here for you know getting an audience of people. So let's go ahead and select just how about player, because that just kind of makes sense for this use case. And then we're going to do player sender. So we're casting sender into a player. That's perfectly valid. There we go. So now we have an audience from that method. And so now we can send a message to that audience. And the audience just happens to have one person, which is the player in this case, but it can have zero or more, like I said before. So obviously you can do a bunch of different things, like I said, but for this episode, we're gonna to stick to messages. So we're just going to do send message, send message. And let's just go ahead and pass in the message that we've created the chat component, rather, the text component. And now that alone should create a message and then send it to the user. Now, here's how we would do it originally. So we're going to do string message is equal to chat color dot blue. And then we can say, I like potatoes. Something like that. Now that's actually much simpler than what we did here, right? You can agree with that. But as our messages get more and more complex, it's gonna be really you know, annoying to have to do all these different types of things, especially when we have events. Um, so you'll see in a second, but the way that Adventure does it is much more scalable, I, I guess. I, that's one way I explain it, but there's many different benefits to this. Um, but yeah, and also of course, you can use other colors more easily than before. You know, you can do RGB in modern Minecraft spigot, but it's not as easy as it should be. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out now. We already registered the command. Let's make sure that we register in our plugin.yml as well. So we'll do command, commands, plural, uh, potato, description, I like potatoes. Oh, I spell potato, potato, potatoes. There we go. All right, so let's try this out. I'll see you in the server in a second. Okie dokie, I'm on the server now. So let's try doing slash potato. And it says, I like potatoes in the blue text that we told it to do it in. So awesome, looks really cool. Now let's go ahead and show you how you can make some more advanced messages. Okay, so this is where, where the, uh, and this is where the power of adventure really shines because it's much easier, like I said. So let's go back to potato command and let's just make a more complex message here. So a text component or components in general, chat components are made up of components. So we have this base component here that makes up the base of our message. So components, our components dot text, I like potatoes and the, co the color is green or not green, blue, sorry. And if you wanna add more stuff, that's perfectly fine. All you gotta do is press enter and then do dots and you have all these methods here you can play with. So you can decorate it with text de decorations, which are formatting stuff. Um, you can append it. So you can append more components, like I said. So you can insert, you can have hover events, all kinds of cool stuff. But let's try appending another component. So we'll just add some more stuff here. And so now it's asking for another component. So we can just do again, component dot text, and then pass in the text, or you can just do content if you want as well. That's another thing you can do, I think. So pass in the content and then build it. But I think just doing it directly is better in my opinion. It's easier in my opinion. Um, so component.text, and we're gonna say and, and we're gonna go ahead and make this um, text formatted. So we're gonna do dot decorate. So text decoration underlined. So that'll add another piece of component to that, another piece of text to that that's formatted underlined. So then we'll add another text component. So component.text. I love dogs. And so we're gonna make this one look cool too. So, so let's give this some color, so color. And then for this you can do uh, named color. 
named text color to be more exact. So name text color dot. And then here you have all the traditional Minecraft colors. So we're going to do, uh, how about gold? There we go. So color gold, and then let's go ahead and format that as well. So we'll do decorate, text decoration, and we're going to make this one bold. And then the final thing we're gonna do is add an exclamation mark on the very end. So component dot text. There we go. So as you can see, um, it's a lot more function calling than the traditional method of building chat messages, but it's also a little more understandable and readable. It kind of just makes sense. And again, as they get more complex, the more this becomes apparent that this is a better way of doing it. So instead of just, just having a message, I like potatoes, we have now added more content onto that text component and essentially combined a bunch of text, text components into one component, and then we're sending that to the player as we were doing before. So let's run this and see what happens, what it looks like. So I'm gonna do slash potato. And now we get, I like potatoes and I love dogs. And now the, the middle component, the and, is underlined as we told it to. And then it says, I love dogs. Interesting. So let me show you something that's really cool in my opinion. So as you can see here, we have I like potatoes and I love dogs. I love dogs is gold and it's bold, but the exclamation mark that we added onto the very end here is still in that original non-bold blue color. And that's just because we have some sort of nesting here. So look at this. So we're appending different components and each component has its own formatting and known color. So when you add color and formatting, it's only being added to the component that you're specifically target targeting. So if you wanna make this look a little better, you can just press enter here and then press enter here. And you can see that this structure kind of makes more sense because it's nested in this sense, right? You're having this original text component with its own formatting. You're adding a second one. This is also nested technically. And so you can see that these methods here don't apply to the thing as a whole, but as again, to the single component that you're targeting. So I think that's really cool. So in this case, when you do component.txt and an exclamation mark, it's not gonna inherit the formatting and the color from the previous component that you've appended. It's going to inherit it from the core component of the, the whole text component, the one that you originally created it with, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, just that the whole nesting structure kind of really, I think is really cool. And just for comparison, let's just see how that would look within regular bucket messages. So we're going to do again, string message is equal to, and then we'll say, I like potatoes. And we'll do aqua chat color dot aqua. So chat color aqua, I like potatoes. Uh, and then uh, we wanna do and, right? So and now we wanna do gold bold, uh, I love dogs. So chat color dot gold, chat color dot bold. I love dogs. And then finally, exclamation mark. Now, for the exclamation mark, we have to reset the formatting back to the original one. So chat color. Uh, there we go. And hopefully that'll get rid of the bold as well. I'm not sure if it does. Um, if it doesn't, you may have to explicitly reset it. But anyway, so the point is, is that there is a clear difference here. Um, this one's more, I don't know what this would be called. It's similar to like kind of like the builder pattern. Um, I guess it is using the builder pattern, but the whole idea is that you're you're telling it exactly what you want to do. You want to create a message, color it, add a new component onto that message. So like add a message onto that message, uh, decorate it, uh, add another message, give it a color, decorate it, add a final message, which is just an exclamation mark. And it's very, I don't know what the term is, but it's very, declarative? I don't know. But this one is also cool too, right? It's more, sh it's shorter. You're not calling as many functions. It's kind of easier to read as well in this specific case. But there are downsides like having to reset the color back here. But this one, you didn't have to do that. It's sort of inherited from the first one, but it's not inheriting the ones from the, from these, because it's only targeting these specifically. Um, so that's not a big deal specifically. Like again, this is kind of simpler to look at. So that on its own is not the biggest deal in the world. But when you get into more advanced stuff like, you know, events like hover events and click events. So when a person clicks on a message or part of your message, it does stuff. And for that, you have to use the bucket or the spigot API um, components. And those are a pain to work with in my opinion. So 
Yeah, it's really your choice how you want to do it, when you want to use adventure, when you want to use bucket traditional messaging or whatever you want to call it. It's up to you. But in this case, I think, uh, so that's up to you. Um, so let's get rid of this. And just for more demonstration though, I want to show you guys um, the different other audiences you can use. So if we want to send it to all players on the server, for example, we can do players. And that'll just give you, as the documentation says, when you do control Q, all online players, which automatically updates as well, which is cool. So that'll send it to all players. So let me just show you something else though. This is really cool in my opinion. I'm just gonna copy it from their documentation. So paste this here and we'll just send text component now. All right, so this is cool. This is one of their text components that they provide as an example. So it starts well, It starts off with U, U, R, A, and then we have that as colorized. So that's a hexadecimal color of whatever this is, light pink it looks like. So you can play with that if you wish, which is really cool. Um, undo that. And so we're pinning another component onto that. It says bunny, and then we have a name text color. So we're coloring it light purple, as you can see on the side here. It tells you what it is. And then we have uh, component.text. So it says exclamation mark press, that's simple. And then we're adding another component onto that. So we're saying key, component dot key bind key dot jump. So what this does here, you can actually do this in bucket and spigot, but this is uh, all this is doing is checking your settings on your client to see what your key binds are for the jump key. And then it's going to print that out in place of this as a string. So in this case, you know, usually everyone's jump key is their space. So when you get sent that message, it's going to say, um, you are bunny press space, not key dot jump. Uh, to jump. And if you had your, you know, your jump key set to something else, it would say you are bunny press F to jump, something like that. Okay. So that's really cool. That's a really cool feature, especially when you have plugins where you need the player to press a certain button, but you don't know if their key binds are mapped to that button. Like for example, I made a tug of war plugin or part of a plugin for a mini game plugin, and I needed them to press either Q or F. I forgot which one it was. I think it was Q, the drop item button. And not everyone uses Q as their drop item button, so I had to use one of these types of things to automatically grab what button they had it, you know, key binded to. So it dynamically grabs the key that it's binded to and shows it, which is really cool. Um, so there, after that, we after we get the name of the key and we're going to color it and then also decorate it with a bold text decoration. And then finally, we're adding uh, one final text component or one final part of the message, which is says to jump, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. The cool thing about Adventure is that it's really easy to read and understand what this is just because of the way that it's structured. Um, so let's go ahead and see it in the server though so that you can concretely see what it looks like, all right? All right, so let's do slash potato. And there we go, it says you are a bunny, press space to jump. As you can see, it, repla it replaced key.jump with space, which just makes perfect sense. So I think that's just really cool, right? And uh, as the documentation says, you could do this a different way. If you want to use like the builder pattern, you can just, let me show you, let's just replace this with the, or I'll just add it side by side. How about that? So it's more understandable. So in this case, we're doing it a little differently, but generally the same. So in this case, we're using the builder pattern because we're specifying dot text with empty parameters and then using dot content. And then when you're done, you know, setting the formatting and all the other stuff, you do dot build and then it gives you a final text component to work with. So that is something you may want to do. Um, according to the documentation, this is mutable, meaning that it can be changed. So they work the same way, but they just, uh, they look a little different because you're using a different type of, uh, you know, way of writing it using the builder pattern here. All right, so the final thing I want to show you is events. So events are different things. Like I said, if you click on a part of a message, you can make it so that it does stuff like runs a command for you. Um, suggests a command by putting it into your chat box, um, copies a string to your clipboard, uh, opens, a UR, uh, opens a URL, opens a file. I didn't even know that's possible. That sounds really cool. Um, you know, changes a book's page, all those kinds of things. So let's see how we can do that. So let's say that for some reason we want to do, let's just change this a little bit. We'll say, you're a bunny, click, and then we'll change this to uh, component dot text me so click me and then we'll colorize it named text color dot gold so you're a bunny click me in gold and we'll make it bold as well so decorate text decoration bold as well as underlined how about that we can actually do this as var this is uh this is a var arg so you can provide as many as many as you want that's what the dot 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 means so we can do text decoration dot bold and also text decoration 
dots underlined, so it looks very awesome. Let's just move this onto another line as well. And now we can make this also have an event by doing dot click event. So whenever we click on this message here, this specific part of the message, the text component that says me, we will trigger some sort of event that happens. And so here you can specify what happens. So click event dot, and you have all these options here. So all the ones I told you about open URL, open file, copy a clipboard, all these kinds of things. So let's go ahead and make it so that it runs a command when you click on this. So run command, we'll do slash kill, or slash suicide rather. And I think that's one of the most powerful parts of this specific part of adventure is that you can really easily add events to your, your text components. So now when they click on me, it should kill them. So let's try this out. Okay, so we'll do slash potato. It says you're a bunny, click me to jump. So we'll click me and we kill ourselves. Awesome. So that's cool. So let me show you some of the other ones. So we'll do suggest, suggest command now. See how that looks. All right, so slash potato. And as you can see, when we click it, it puts it into our chat box rather than actually running it for us. So we get the option of doing that. So that's cool. Now I'm gonna show you one more, copy clipboard. I think this one's one of my favorites, I think. So we're just gonna say Nitro Pepsi is lit. I'm very passionate about this. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Boom, it says your bunny click me to jump. And now it looks like nothing happens, but when we do control V to paste, we have the text. So that is awesome. Okie dokie, so let's go ahead and show you the other type of events we can listen for, the hover event. So this is kind of obvious what it does. So whenever you hover over the message, rather than clicking on it, it'll do something. And the results of that, or the thing that you can have run, is different. So you can do hover event dot, and then you have these options here. So you have show text, show entity, um, show item. Um, these all kind of make sense, right? Let's just do the simple one for now. So hover event dot show text, and let's see what the heck that does. So we'll say, and so it's asking for a component. We know how to make a component, so we'll do component dot text. My favorite flavor is cheese. Awesome. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. <laughs> says you are a bunny, click me to jump, and then we'll just hover over me though. And it says my favorite flavor is cheese. Awesome. It works perfectly. And of course, if you want to, you can specify colors and formatting for that as well. So play around with that if you wish. I think that's very useful for uh, spicing up your plugins because if you've ever been on sort of, you know, an advanced server or server with really good plugins, they have those types of things embedded into the messages that the plugin will send to players. So for example, something that I saw that I thought was really cool, whenever I see a player's name in chat, um, it shows stats on the player, like their balance and other cool information. So. Uh, think about that and see how you can incorporate that into your plugins. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this episode. I just wanted to show you how to get started with Adventure and also how to create chat components and text components, whatever the heck you want to call it, and send them to an audience, which in this case was just a player, but it can be anybody, you know, all players on the server, senders, command senders, uh, you know, freaking your grandma, whatever. And if you want to see more tutorials on the Adventure library, then please let me know. I'm really i um, excited to do more, but I won't do it unless you hit that like button. So hit that like button and let me know what you think. And if you have anything to add to this tutorial in case I miss something, I just wanted to show you guys, you know, the basics so you can get started. Um, not, you know, every single thing, but, uh, but yeah, next time I'll probably be showing something like how to use the sound system or the boss bar system, whatever, something like that. So stay tuned for that. Also, don't forget to check the description below for the, you know, the link to the documentation for adventure. Uh, all that is there for you to check out. I will see you guys next time. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, 
feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.